seeing what's happening out there. We're coming up behind! He'll show up eventually. Hello, and welcome to Film Rant. This movie has been a long time coming thanks to lead star Dylan O'Brien sustaining a pretty serious head injury in a stunt gone wrong. So, thanks for that, Dylan. Actually, this was pretty serious. Dylan says after his accident, he questioned whether he'd ever act again and got himself in a pretty dark place. I just want to say that I'm glad Dylan's back. I think he's a talented dude, and like many other Maze Runner fans, I wanted to see what happens, man. I love the first Maze Runner movie and the second was also a solid entry, even if both of them are rife with plot holes. I'll state that I've not read the books but I do know a bit about them so I can notice certain differences between them and the movies. I'm fully aware that the Scorch Trials deviated quite significantly from a lot of events in the book and I'm also led to believe that this movie is the same. However, is Wes Ball's finale to the Maze Runner franchise worth a watch? Well, to answer that, I'll go into spoiler territory so flat trans your way down to the cinema and watch the movie for yourself if you don't want anything spoiled. Normally I start my reviews by talking about the characters, but since this is the third instalment in the franchise, I'll only talk about new characters. And there's really only one. He goes by the name of Lawrence, played by Walton Goggins, which is a hell of a name. He sort of looks like a ghoul from the Fallout series, but maybe a little less decomposed. I guess he's been infected with the flare, but that's never explicitly said, or if it was, I totally missed it. Lawrence seems like a genuinely interesting character. He's the leader of the right arm faction who was stationed just outside the city where Wicked is housed. He looks like he's got 1,000 stories to tell and a whole load of reasons to do what he's doing, but we don't really find out any of it, which is a bit disappointing. I like Lawrence, but I wanted to see more of his character in this movie. However, I understand why he may have been significantly cut as they really had a lot to get through here. And by a lot to get through, I mean there's lots of shooty shooty gun gun scenes. After the opening action scene and the following calm 15 minutes or so, it's just non-stop action for the remaining hour and a half. None of the action is bad here, in fact it's actually all quite thrilling, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel a little fatigue when watching it. Final movies of a franchise are usually balls to the wall action for the most part, but these action set pieces are usually broken up by quieter, more solemn moments. The Snape reveal in the final Harry Potter, the conversations with Peter in Mockingjay Part 2, that kind of thing. The death cure rarely slows down for a period of time once it gets going, and the film does seem to drag as the action scenes never seem to end. A film can drag while still being entertaining though, because sure the action scenes are thrilling, well choreographed and bolstered by excellent visual effects, but ultimately you're kind of watching the same sequence over and over again. I think this movie really could have done with some more quieter scenes dotted throughout that just lets you stop and breathe. If you've come to this movie to watch non-stop action though, you won't be disappointed. From what I've been led to believe, the cranks in the books are more like crazy people, who steadily get crazier and crazier as the virus begins to infect them more. In the Scorch Trials, every crank we're introduced to is in full Last of Us style zombie mode, clicking, twitching and snapping at our heroes trying to bite their faces off. I thought the decision to make them like that is an interesting one as they seem more threatening on screen than someone who seems to be acting a little odd, so I get that creative decision. After all, they've done very well and they are genuinely a scary threat. But the death cure makes the cranks inconsistent. For the most part, again, they're clicking, twitching, bitey zombies, but there's one scene where Thomas and Cora are attempting to drive through a tunnel filled with cranks. One of them is a crazed lady who approaches the vehicle and asks them to help her. So she at least has some kind of humanity left in her and she can talk. All of the other cranks in the movie though, with the exception of Lawrence, if he even is a crank, are in full zombie mode. I understand that it could be that you turn a little crazy and then go full zombie mode as the flare infects you, but I think we'd need to see more crazy people to solidify that fact, or even have it outright explained to us in a bit of exposition. We see Newt get a little aggressive and pissy, but then he's relatively normal again before he turns full zombie. It's just all inconsistent. It's not necessarily a big problem or even a negative to the movie, but I would have just liked the cranks to have been portrayed with more continuity. I'm not sure whether I love or hate how the movie ends. Nobody wins. Normally I'm a fan of movies like that, but there's just something off about it in this one. There's no real resolution. Thomas discovers his blood can be used to make a cure, but the only person who can make the cure from his blood dies, and he's left with only one vial of serum. Thomas and the rest of the survivors get themselves to the safe haven and live happily ever after while the rest of the world remains utterly fucked and the cure is just there with them stranded on a beach. I think the last shot alludes to a possible sequel but as far as I'm aware this is the final movie. The book apparently ends in a similar way and there was no sequel to that so I guess this is actually it. 
If that's the case, then I think I would like a bit more closure on the whole thing. There's still so many questions that need to be answered. At the same time though, I'm a sucker for pessimist endings where nobody wins, so I can commend them for having the balls to end the story that way. Maybe Dash now handles it better in the books, but the movie does leave a little bit of a sour taste. I actually thought the movie was going to end in a totally different way. I figured they'd find out that something in Thomas is the key to the cure, but he has to die in order for it to be harvested, and to be honest, I think it's better that way. Thomas goes throughout the franchise hell-bent on stopping Wicked carrying out their questionable methods of developing a cure. It's rare that you get a villain who is genuinely trying to help the world, so you do side with Thomas, but you also wonder what his endgame plan is. If he destroys Wicked, then how will he, or the right arm, develop a cure? Sure, Wicked are doing some awful shit, but it's all for the greater good. So if Thomas destroys Wicked and damns the world to remain infected forever, then surely he's the villain. Anyway, Thomas doesn't care that the flare exists so much because all he's seen of it is faceless, mindless cranks. Teresa is much more personally attached to the flare because she watched her mother get infected in turn, which made her go to Wicked. Twice. Thomas needs that push to realise Wicked need to keep doing what they're doing or at least continue with the same objective. If Thomas discovers he's the key to curing everyone, all he needs is the push to give that cure to Wicked and that push comes in him seeing Newt get infected in turn. The same way Teresa watched her mother effectively die. We could have Thomas carry out his plan as we see in the movie. Teresa tries to get him to, I don't know, let's say that it's his brain that they need, so she reluctantly requests that he give himself up for the greater good. He doesn't fully trust her, so he doesn't believe her and he's not seen the full effects of the flare on someone he actually cares for yet. Seeing you die or kill himself because of the flare makes him rethink this, and Thomas, as the hero he is, willingly returns to Wicked to sacrifice himself to save everyone else. Kind of like when Harry Potter goes to Voldemort to die in Deathly Hallows Part 2. I think that ending is much more bittersweet. It certainly isn't as miserable as the ending we actually get, and I'm normally a big fan of miserable endings, but I just really wanted the story to go this way. I think it ties everything up nicely. You could still have the shit with Jensen happen when he kills Ava and tries to stop Thomas and Teresa, but I just really wanted that moment where Thomas completely sacrifices himself to save the planet. This movie did have a few unexpected twists and turns that I really didn't see coming. Newt actually not being immune and Ava Page just completely giving up in her quest for a couple. But the biggest one was the return of eyebrows. I really did not see that coming at all. I was very confused as to how he was revived, but I loved the dialogue between him and Newt where Newt said, But we watched you die! And he simply said, No, you left me to die. That's all I really needed. Okay, I figure he managed to get out of the facility alive before being picked up by the right arm and brought to the edge of the city. Not sure how they cured him of the sting from the griever, but fuck it. Eyebrows is back, guys. He definitely redeemed himself for being a complete prick in the first movie, but I still think he and Thomas needed to have a chat so he could apologise for being a monumental bellend. Know how I said the movie could have done with a few slower moments earlier? Well, this would have been a good opportunity for one of them that they missed. Sure, Gally is stung when he's killed Chuck, so you can kind of forgive him for that, but I think he needed to apologise to Thomas for being a complete twat to him the whole time they were in the maze together. I don't really like how Jansen is used in this movie. Ava Page is a villain who has good intentions but is morally grey and Jansen is kind of like her attack dog. I think Jansen is overused if anything. He seems to be in the movie far too much, probably because the writers or director feel that Ava Page isn't an out and out villain so they needed someone a bit more generic. A face to punch if you will. But he's just present far too much. I got bored of him by the end of the movie, bored of his cat and mouse chase with Thomas where he'd always lose. It was just too much. I also didn't really understand Jansen as a character. What was his motivation? He wants the cure because he has the flair himself, but does he also want the rest of the world to not have the cure because he likes being in power? That's the only reason I can see for the things he does, but it's never really made clear. He's such an enigma that seems to be overused. I quite like the idea of having Ava Page as the major villain, but she's only half villain because she is actually trying to do something to help everybody, and Thomas is half villain because he's trying to stop her from helping everybody. Together, they make both a villain and a hero, and I like that parallel between them. They should have just kept her as the only villain and have Jansen as a minor hurdle that needed to be put out of his misery in order for Thomas to get to Ava. From a technical standpoint, I just want to mention the action scenes. They are very well made. There's some excellent set pieces in this movie and the visual effects and fight sequences are all spot on. If you go into this movie purely for action, you'll not be let down. It's definitely exhilarating and entertaining stuff. The only issue I have is more of the logic of the characters within these scenes. There's a brilliant opening sequence where Thomas and Vince are trying to rescue Mino from a train, and aside from the questionable point where Newt is exactly where he needs to be when the train stops, even though he shouldn't be because Thomas and Vince fucked up a bit at the start so the train should be further forward than planned, 
There's some questionable shooting when the pair come head to head with wicked soldiers. When the train is stopped, the rest of the train stops further forward around a bend to the right. The wicked soldiers approach running along the right hand side of the tracks. And not one character takes cover on the opposite side of the train. They all just have their backs against the train directly facing the wicked soldiers. Doesn't seem like a bright idea. The wicked soldiers also seem to forget that their guns are in fact ranged weapons capable of shooting people from over 10 feet away. This is a problem throughout the movie but it's especially evident in this scene. It's a little thing but it does make the action scenes less believable. So overall, The Death Cure is a brilliantly satisfying end to the Maze Runner franchise. It is very heavily action orientated with thrilling and engaging action scenes, but ultimately you grow tired of them by the end of the movie. There's a few unexpected twists and turns which made sense and were welcome to freshen things up a bit. I think the actual ending could have possibly been made better with some changes to the plot, but ultimately I think I'm satisfied with what I got. The Death Cure is undoubtedly the best movie in the series and there wasn't anything I really didn't like about it. Jansen is probably the weakest part of the movie, but even he has his moments. If you were on the fence about seeing this movie because the other two didn't light your fire, then I recommend you just take the plunge and go see it. It's a thoroughly entertaining and solid 140 minutes of film. The Maze Runner, The Death Cure gets 4 frames out of 5. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Film Rant. Thomas, you can save your friends, or you can save us all.